Bore da, as we say in Welsh, or good morning. It's Sam, aka Lymphomalas, here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do some word art using artist's masking fluid and watercolours and some little shot glasses, etc., to make bubbly watercolour word art. The word I've got here is gwych, which is Welsh for great. So I hope this is a project that will help me learn a bit of Welsh. Um, you could also use it for children's name signs for on bedrooms um, or just sayings you like. Okay, so I'm moving things out of the way. So what I've first done is I've printed a word I like um, on just printer paper. So this is happis. Happis means happy in Welsh. Okay, then the next stage is to trace it onto a piece of watercolour paper, like this watercolour paper. Um, so how I've done that is I've actually used a light box, but what you could do is hold the piece of paper of your word with watercolour paper over it against a window and trace it through the window. Then what we do is we use the masking fluid and some form of applicator. Now I've got a lovely applicator with a silicon end but you could use um, a cocktail stick or coffee stirrer um, or anything like that. Don't use your best paintbrush or you're in danger of wrecking it. It's, it's a funny stuff this, it, it kind of, whatever brand you use, it kind of smells fishy. But it, it does the job quite well if you get it on even. I'm not sure I've got it on evenly enough here, but at least it will give you an idea. And with a lot of art, because you're doing something that's kind of analog, hand done, the odd mistake is not so much of a problem. It kind of just makes it feel more human. I had a go at this earlier and I managed to start the video without my mic on. So very like me, but here we go. I'm just touching up another little bit and I just want to touch up that bit a bit. Now I've left my pencil markings quite strong so that you can see them. But um, you don't necessarily have to do that. You might find you get a tidier result if you don't. Just going to touch up some bits just to make sure they are properly covered. So we won't know how well I've done this till the very end when we move this masking fluid. So just going to clean off the end with a bit of kitchen towel and uh, put the top back on on my pot of masking fluid quite quickly. Put that away. Now you'll see that I, um, I had a bit of an accident there so I can show you how to remove it. You basically run your finger along it gently and roll and it comes off. I do also use a mask away which is like waxy and you rub it over like a rubber to remove this um, masking fluid which itself is quite rubbery um, but you don't have to have one. So I'm going to say goodbye for a moment while I just and put this on hold while this dries because it won't be so good if it's not dry when I paint it. 
Right, I think the H has dried enough. So I'm going to paint over the H. So I'm going to be using um, these water bar barrel brushes and this tray of paints. Now I'm using one tray of paints, one brand, because that actually gives me a bit of consistent coherence, I say, I'd say is the word coherence in the shades. So I'm not going to mix colours. You could mix your own colours and have it as a colour mixing exercise, but I'm going to mostly use I'm going to use the shades in this palette. And because they're all produced by the same manufacturer in the same palette, they have um, more likelihood of working well together. So you can practice your colour theory and put colours together that are classics. So on opposite sides of the colour wheel, I'm going to use the orange and the purple. Another trick with this is you could just use normal paint brushes rather than a brush pen which has got water in the barrel. Um, I quite like the water barrels because you squeeze water through to, 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 to clean the brush. But you don't have to have that, you could have any brush for this as you'll see in a minute. Um, and the other thing is to just use plenty of, of water. So I've got actually two jars of fresh water here and I will be getting more from the sink, putting it on pause from time to time. So first off, I've got some, I've got some water in my orange and I'm just getting plenty of orange on this water brush and I'm going to paint half the lip of this ramekin in orange. And then I'm going to paint the other half in a, a violet, a purpley violet. All I'm going to do, I'm going to put the violet side on the H because I want the white lettering to have dark colours around it. I'm going to put that down. I'm not turning it, I'm just pressing it down. Remove it. And then I'm going to use my water brushes that I've already used to add more water and more paint. One thing I was taught with watercolours is use, use one pot of water to clean your brushes and the other for clean water. So I'm going to do that. So then I'm just getting rid of the paint I've already got on my paintbrush. to make sure my H is covered enough or it won't show. And put some clean water between the two of them to let the paint move. to produce effect. Now I've got a lot of water on there, but don't worry about that. I have, um, if your paper, paper goes wrinkled, what I do is once this is fully dry and you've removed the masking fluid, what I like to do is actually um, 
iron between a tea towel, between two halves of a tea towel, I iron on hot for watercolour and that gets rid of the wrinkles. You just have to do it quite carefully and sometimes I spread water over the back of a watercolour gently with a big um, paintbrush. But you can do absolutely wonderful things with that. So the next one, I'm going to do this light green. That's not quite clean enough yet. Another way of cleaning your brush is to use kitchen towel. So I'm just going to take the water out of that one and add some cleaner water. Adding the water, it then activates it. And I'm also going to use some red. What would have been helpful if I just added a bit of clean water to each colour first to activate it. Okay, so I've got this, this glass pudding container that I saved because it makes quite a nice little glass for homemade puddings. And it's perfect for this. And I'm putting on some green. And some some red. And then I'm going to put the red here over these letters. And it's splattered, which is quite nice because then I get a natural. You know how painters flick paint to get splatters? Well, I've got them naturally. And that's actually quite painterly. So I'm just going to say add some more green, add for water and then some more green down here, up here I should say, actually it's down here, so I'm doing this upside down, add a bit more green. As I'm painting, I'm kind of going with the paintbrush in the direction of the circle to, to, to add a bit of um, shape and volume to the, to the piece. You can see it's bleeding one to the other, um, which is quite nice but you might want to limit that to where you want it to happen. Now that was quite, quite dark. I just want to absorb that bit there. So I don't totally lose, lose the orange. And then I'm not going to do this bit yet because um, because it will just run. I don't want it to quite run that much. I'm going to do a blue one down there. Blue and yellow I think. So start with the yellow.
Now I'm going to stop my camera here and I'm going to just proceed a bit longer on my own and come back to you to show you um, the it with many more bubbles on it. Okay. I've probably now done about as much as I want to so what I need to do is um, wait for it to dry and then take off the um, masking fluid right I think it's dry enough now um, you have to really wait till it's totally dry for this or it'll smudge so I'm going to remove the masking fluid you can just do it with a finger like that or you can remove one use one of these mask ways which just does it quicker and cleaner the thing with using your finger is you just have to be a bit careful not to smudge the paint So that's worked. Now with, uh, if you want a smooth edge on all your letters, I found the easiest way to do that is to use some jelly roll, um, a metallic pen. The last one I used, um, on the last one I used gold, on this one I'm just going to use silver and you just go along the edge, make an edge and that smooths it. I think you can see what I'm doing there so I'm just going to stop it for a minute to do the rest. Right so I've outlined it now and you can see it's um, it's got a nice metallic edge but it's quite um, a pleasant piece. It's a great technique this to practice making washes, mixing colours, seeing the effect of one colour on another, um, just to increase your manual dexterity with a brush um, so i hope you've enjoyed it 
the next month's art or craft project um, with me please just subscribe to my um, YouTube channel and you'll see it there. Thank you very much and bye for now.